When people pray to the Creator, God, the gods, angels, deceased relatives, or other entities, the general hope is that these beings are listening, that they are benevolent, and that they desire to grant our wishes. But what if none of that is true? What if, in reality, the very act of praying to something outside ourselves disempowers and subserviates us? In other words, what if prayer makes us pray? People have been praying to God and gods for many millennia, asking to be saved from suffering, freed from enslavement, and cured from disease. People have prayed to be delivered from poverty, war, floods, famine, starvation, and torture. Billions of suffering souls throughout history have prayed for these same things, yet all of these problems still remain. If our prayers are really being heard, and truly matter to these beings, why has there not been some serious, large-scale divine intervention and improvement to help us? People pray to be cured from cancer, and then, if cured, they praise God for hearing their prayers. But isn't this the same God who created cancer to begin with? Then, if God doesn't remove their cancer, it's usually said to be God's will, or in God's hands. So, if it's all just God's will anyway, then what's the point of praying? If God didn't want people to suffer, if God didn't want a world full of death, disease, disasters, destitution, and depravity, then it would have been created differently. Why should we assume that a God who created all the conditions for our suffering actually wants to deliver us from it, but only if we ask really nicely, on our knees, with our hands clasped? This ritual act of subservience to an outside entity or entities to assist us is disempowering to our own spirit. Why should we put the onus on anything outside ourselves to save us? Wouldn't it be wiser instead for us to pray to our own inner divinity, our highest spiritual self? What is wrong with trusting our own personal power and praying to the deepest source within us? If we all possess a small spark of the divine, the Holy Spirit within, why shouldn't we pray directly to that part of ourselves? The one true unknowable God would not desire our prayers or our worship. To propose that God needs our love assumes that God is deficient in something. Such a needy God would not be omnipotent and must be some lesser deity anyway. Considering the near-death deception experience, where astral entities claiming to be God, gods, angels, aliens, deceased relatives, or other beings appear at physical death to usher us through a guilt-inducing life-review process, how might the act of prayer be viewed through this lens? If we spent our lifetimes praying to an outside entity for protection, or to grant our wishes, then that puts us in its debt. Couldn't these astral beings then leverage our previous prayers against us in the afterlife? Any entity that claimed to be the one who answered our prayers would possess a significant power over us. They could then guilt us into reciprocation through some sort of contract being fulfilled. Jose Aragon wrote, Gustav Mayrink, in his most profound and extraordinary book, The Green Face, gives us the key to the process of liberation of the spirit. Mayrink gives us a technique and recommends a practice which we should adopt. You must ask the spirit, because the only one who can hear you is the spirit. You must talk to it and ask only it. Here, Mayrink is of course relating that the unknowable God is very far from the common man, and the Demiurge, who could maybe hear him, is a judge who would never change his karmic sentences to consent to an insignificant request by an insignificant man. All that remains is to ask the spirit. In the case of a man who has woken up and liberated himself, things are different. He indeed will be able to change wills, laws, and destinies. But if a common man wants to be heard, he will have to talk to his spirit. Mayrink says, If you want to pray, pray to your invisible self. It is the only God who will listen to your prayers. But very few men speak to their spirit, yet most of them sleep like a log. For Mayrink, the liberation of the spirit is the only worthwhile thing a man can do in life. It is the only task that he should perform. There is no other single thing which justifies spending time on. All the rest are useless. This is the only task, indeed the most important one, to which a man can dedicate his life. Soren Kierkegaard said, The function of prayer 
is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of the one who prays. And Howdy Makowski wrote, Is praying just making us pray, P-R-E-Y? Where is our energy and focus going with this practice? It seems prayer is just putting our own authority on some outside force, hoping it will like us and grant us something, so we keep trying to please the puppeteer. How do we know who or what we are praying to? This is one of the crucial pieces of information that almost no one contemplates. Are they angels, spirit guides, loving dead people, happy aliens, God, Jesus, or Ashtar Command? Or are the communicators nasty parasitic entities who are masters of disguise and deception? You say you spoke to an angel or some religious figure, but how do you really know? When you pray, how do you know where your intent and energy is going? The more we put our energy on things outside ourself, the more those beings can manipulate us and make our lives much, much worse. What is wrong with praying to yourself? To trust your own inner power. A great shift will occur when you realize that you do not need a savior, nor do you need to pray to anything outside of yourself. You, as in the essence part of your soul, is the most powerful thing within this creation. This is why the system is set up to distract, confuse, and deceive it. Because if you turned all that energy that is always focused on something outside yourself and focused it within, there would be an explosion of power. That power can then be used to override all the systems and tricks that have been keeping you here. When you learn the only savior you need is you, and the only prayer you ever need to make is to your true self, the exit is closer. <laughs>